We are now recording uh, the May 9th, 2023 um, meeting of the Amherst Cultural Council. Um, and I'm going to read the script that we read before all of our virtual meetings. Um, and this is just to notify anybody that uh, pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, which was recently continued, um, this meeting is conducted via remote means and members of the public who wish to access the meeting uh, are able to do so over Zoom. Um, and if they're not able to access the Zoom link or the Zoom um, meeting, they can they can view the recording, which is posted promptly on the town's um, YouTube channel. So no in-person attendance is permit of the of members of the public or anybody is permitted, uh, but every effort is made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings and uh, participate. So uh, that that is that, and now we'll just go ahead and do a sound check and uh, and a hello. So I'll just kind of read off the read off the boxes, starting at the top. Um, Leah. Right here. <laughs> uh, Eleanor? Yes, here. And um, I will have my camera off. Sorry to say, people. <laughs> I think a few of us are under the weather, so I, I, um, mm -hmm. just take care of yourselves if you have to hop off. Uh, Robin? Yeah. Rachel? Hi, I'm here. Hi, everyone. Hey, Rachel, and we know your connection's a little spotty, so just, you know, just let us know. Okay. And Cody. Oops. Hey, Cody. So um, folks saw that we have a, an update from the Business Improvement District, the bid on our agenda. Julian, um, Julian uh, Gabrielle Gould is going to join us at 6.15 just to kind of talk about that fall block party um, and sort of what it's going to take to make that happen, but that sounds really good. Um, so before we get to that, if we could just sort of, um, I guess, start with just the, well, we have no um, minutes, no attendees, so we don't have a public comment at the moment, but I'll keep an eye on that. Um, and I did send out minutes for um, March and April. Leah, thank you so much. Those are really, really detailed. I finally had a chance to actually read them carefully this morning mm -hmm. and um, really appreciate that. Very, um, very nicely done. So if folks have any um, changes or suggestions or, or other conversation about the minutes, please let me know. And if not, if somebody wants to make a motion to accept, we can certainly do that. Robin. So the, uh, well, <laughs> so the April minutes, uh, they need to reread it. Um, wasn't George Ryan there? And For public he, comment. He did, he did come and make public comment. That's right. Right. So it says, then you don't guest. So he doesn't yeah. get listed and, um, okay, I was just wondering, cause he's the one who proposed that we, you're, you know. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So that that should be um, not, whether or not it's, it's come in by name, that should definitely be recorded in the minute. So that's a good catch. So I think we should um, propose to amend and, and just include George's participation. Yeah, he was there and he asked us to consider. Yep, I think that's it. Yeah, good catch. And I, I did notice that um, Leah caught Leah said something like, you know, was proposed by the public or somewhere in there, but I think it's it's worth, you know, acknowledging it was a public comment during the meeting. I think I also may have been late to that meeting. I forget why. And so I think I arrived after that. Yeah. It's not a big, you know. Yeah. Your notes are very well, thank you so much. thorough. <laughs> For sure. So okay. So I would we'd entertain a motion, or I'll I'll go ahead. I'll move to accept the two sets of minutes as amended um, for Robin's comment just now. If somebody wants to second that, I'll second it. Okay. Can I do that with? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Um, any discussion? Okay, we'll just go to a roll call then. Uh, Rachel. I'll come back to you, Rachel. Um, Cody? Hmm. Yeah. Eleanor? Yes. Leah? Yes. And Rachel, you're unmuted, so. Yes. Um, sorry, I was trying to unmute early. <laughs> <laughs> no yes. problem at all. Thanks. And we appreciate your efforts to, to participate. Uh, okay, so it passes unanimously. So we will. Um, I'll send those over once I get the amended one. I'll send that over to um, Angela for posting for, uh, for the website, which is great. Really appreciate that. 
Um, and then let's see, why don't I jump down to the um, festivals and projects update? Because that's just good news, just good news coming every which way. So of course, credit goes to Eleanor for, um, for putting the original application in. Everybody knows the story with the FNP grant, which was that um, the money was awarded to us for the spring block party. The spring block party was postponed for a year slash canceled. Um, we oh. we went to MCC and well, the the FY the, the 2023 block party was canceled, whether it's you know, whether they call that postponed or <laughs> uh or put off. Um we went to MCC and we asked them if we could if we could amend. Uh, you know, and this was a this was a tricky process. And and I will say that um having having um uh, Mindy sort of in her position helped us with MCC just make sure that we were able to move things on, along expeditiously. And, and so they did eventually approve a, a very informal amendment request to repurpose this, these funds for the Juneteenth celebration. Um, and it's really nice because Jen Moynston, for, for several of you who've been here for a year or two, know that um, Jen has come and spoke with us twice now on the DEI efforts that she's been working on. She's, you know, she was literally the founding member of the DEI department. She now has a director, Pamela Nolan Young, who's also, um, you know, wonderful and very committed to this work. But, but Juneteenth has has been um, Jen Moinston's um, baby for for as long as I'm I'm aware. Um, and she recently was awarded a big grant from the state for her work on behalf of African Americans um, in Massachusetts. And so, really, just a nice thing for us to be able to repurpose that 2,500 for Juneteenth. Um, she was through the moon excited about you know being able to bring in like a headline performer. Um, I haven't heard I haven't heard who who finally is the performer yet. Um, but one important thing that I'll share with you with you all is that MCC told us that whatever whatever um, Juneteenth wants to use the money for, they can use it for. In other words, that event is you know right in line with their equity goals. With obviously you know festival, it's a it's a festival. Um, you know the town common event is a festival, so they were. They were really excited about it. They approved it very quickly. Um, it did take them a few weeks to get us a revised contract, but we have that. Um, Julianne and Holly Drake got it turned around. Uh, I'm sorry, um, Angela and Holly Drake got it turned around in less than a day, and it's been received with the state. So those funds should be deposited into um, our account. Well, the June our, our account slash the Juneteenth account within the next couple of days. So everything has moved really nicely along there, and and I'm just grateful to. Um, you all, you all for the brainstorming and, and I think just sticking with it so that we can make sure we, we got that money um, through. So it's in their hands now and, um, and I'm very hopeful that we'll have, a, we'll have a great event. I think if you've never been to the Amherst Juneteenth celebration on the common, it's awesome. It really, really is just a great example of like a community, um, interactive community festival event. Um, the nice cool. people, everybody's happy and yeah, very nice. Yeah, it's great. Um, so that's just that's just an informational update. I didn't have any um, any additional action items there. Um, with the grants, if we want to just move ahead to the grants update, we can. Although, actually, what, I'm gonna let's hold off on that because if anybody had a chance to look at the amendment request form from the AHRA, um, it actually sort of turns the decision over to us a little bit in a way that we're. It'll probably take us more than. Two minutes to <laughs> to make that to make that decision. So um, yeah, I, I included it as an attachment, and um, Angela posted it on the on the document folder on the town website. But but there is a there is an amendment request from the AHRA, and um, I think folks probably remember that you know we don't need to vote on every single amendment request anymore. That's kind of an MCC. Uh, uh, new thing that that you know two cultural council members can can approve an amendment. However, Julianne and I both agreed that this one was so long coming, um, and it's such a and and then the amendment request itself is kind of complex, so we really didn't feel comfortable doing that without bringing it to the council and having you know having kind of an open discussion about it. Um, so why don't we wait until after the bid? I'll, I'll hold on that until after the bid update. Um, just so folks know, we have not communicated out to our grantees about the fall block party yet. We kind of, I kind of wanted to have one more conversation with you all. And actually I had to get permission from the town offices um, to 
figure out exactly how we're going to transfer the funds into the bids hands. So it's just, there's just been a couple of little things we wanted to get worked out before we really put a blast out to all of our um, grantees. Um, but I'm hoping, you know, tomorrow or Friday to do that and just get, just get the word out to, you know, not just the folks who said they were interested in the spring, but really our entire slate of grantees. We want to give them a, a second chance to participate in the, um, in the fall block party event um, as we were planning. So I've been texting with Gabrielle. I know she was kind of rushing home. She actually said she wanted to get um, some asparagus, which I have to say in, you know, in May in, in Amherst is a very, very, very respectable and important goal to have. Um, so we might want to sit tight for an extra minute or two on that. We are the asparagus capital of the world, or we were. <laughs> and let me say that um, in case people don't know, the powwow has been changed to the high school for various reasons. Hopefully next year on the come. So. Yeah, and if anybody hasn't been able to um, attend the powwow or didn't attend last year, it's it's Saturday and Sunday on Memorial Day weekend, the 25th and 6th, I think, and really a lovely event and, and uh, free to the public and, you know, just a good, ex just a good chance to connect with people. You know, it's very low key, very social, um, really enjoyed it. We do have, of course, powwow royalty in, in our midst. So, um, you know, I don't know <laughs> what I'm do. doing talking about it. Uh, I won't, I won't try to represent much. So I went to the um, Asian Americans Pacific Islanders event on the commons. So it was very simple. Like started at one at 11, there was no one there <laughs> doing any setup to the point that we wondered. Um, so it, it was very nice. I don't, I don't know if it's something that, you know, we could assist with a grant to help enlarge it because it was pretty small and limited. Um, or, you know, which means reaching out to various people and saying, mm, you, know, you might be able to apply for a grant and it might be a more expensive. I mean, there were, there was a table from the historical society about the, their exhibit they're doing on um, Cambodian refugees of 40 years ago in Amherst. And, oh, there was a town table giving out COVID tests. And there was a map of Asia, which was rather expensive, including Afghanistan. Um, and the friend I was with was very excited to go to the map, which is almost 70, but she's still really excited to go see the map and place her pin. Um, and then there was food, which is free, which the restaurants paid for, by the way. Um, and a yes. little bit of performance. It was small and it could be, you know, it was nice. It's, it's a good fun. example of, and I, I please let's hold, hold that because when Rachel talks a little bit about the needs assessment, I think, you know, that's a good example of the kind of thing that we certainly could be more proactive about reaching out to and, you know, offering um, the application, you know, making sure they're familiar with the application process. So yeah. how, hello, Gabrielle, can you hear us? I can. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? We can Hi, hear Gabrielle. you. Hi. So I'd say we're all very excited about um, moving, moving forward and <laughs> participating in the existing block party as it stands right now. Yeah. Um, and I told folks I haven't gotten the word out to our grantees yet. Um, we're going to We'll go back out to the whole group, not just the ones who expressed interest in the spring, and you know, go back out to the whole group with sort of a positive, energizing message around um, what it's going to look like in the fall, and and see who's uh, game to participate. Um, Great, love that. Wanna... So, um, from from our yeah. end, um, I think anybody who attended the last block block party, which was the block party that finally returned after two years hiatus. Um, saw that we did a major stage at the top of Amity. And um, basically we're going to double that stage and put the other one down by what it, Kendrick Park. 
Um, and I feel like with the protocol now being open and also 11 EP, which is the new building going up, is going to be finished by then. Um, we're going to see, I mean, there's just a lot of life happening down there, which is really exciting. And I'm really excited to invigorate that space. And this, this, this funding and this concept is really making that possible because now we get to program it with the artists that we were thinking of working with for the spring um, and, uh, and going forward with you guys. So we're, we're really excited about this because it really brings a new um, dynamic and really interesting um opportunity for us to present art on both sides of the street and you know not everybody can be at both sides but we're looking at keeping one side very very children friendly and the other side a little bit more adult if you will is the date <laughs> announced yet is the date yeah. final with the town so nothing has been announced yet but it is absolutely final it is the third thursday in september um which i believe is thursday the 21st um, which is our historic, we always try and keep it on that third Thursday. Okay. okay. And five to nine, I think is what it, yeah, five to nine last year. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of five, the, the, yeah, the, the, I think what we're going to do down at Kendrick, because we're not going to have as many of those big, massive um, Klieg lights, if you will, we'll do five to eight down there. And then the, the finale will be the big band up at the top. Okay, so five to eight. Um, so we have about a three hour block. We have the single stage um, near Kendrick with obviously with a sound system and all. Um, mm -hmm. Yep, sound, lights, everything. So when we're talking spring, we're talking about multiple spots for performers slash um, folks. In, in Are you thinking this would be sort of a single stage for people to come on and off? Is that, or or are there multiple spots that folks could do? booths or whatever well what we'd love to do with the stage is program it so see who from your um, grantees are interested um I, like i think of starlight i think of um ballet i think of you know all of that and then we can intersperse um i know that there's a we always have brought in an irish dance group i'm going to forget their names but it's a school for irish dance maybe it's the duffy academy so we wanna be able to weave that in and out of the stage. So I think what we'll do is we'll do half hour and have it fully programmed so people know. And we'll. I think this is a great opportunity for us to go a little bit differently with the block party and have pass outs. Um, so like when you're coming to the block party, someone will be there to hand you a piece of paper that says like what the program is for the, the Kendrick stage and then what the program is for the Amity stage. Um, in terms of booths, that's tricky um because of course the focus of the block party is downtown businesses and as anybody who's attended the block party you'll see it's booths literally back to back to back all the way um i hadn't thought about that matt to be perfectly honest so i i think i need to regroup and maybe look at if we could use wrens or um the catholic church is under new i'm going to use the wrong term but management um, so the Catholic Church has a new um, friar, and he is super, he seems very community oriented, and I'm meeting with him, and maybe he would be really interested in having, instead of turning the sprinklers on during the block party, which the prior priest did, mm. the new friar might actually be interested in being part of this, and he has that huge parking lot, and that beautiful, beautiful green lawn, and we might actually be able to incorporate them into the block party instead of it being a no-go zone. Isn't that usually a matter of insurance and liability? Nope, it has okay. not been. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> um, I think it was just a choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Well, so that's, yeah, that, I mean, I, I guess that would be something before I, honestly, before I even put out a thing to the whole um, group is I'd wanna know what the opportunities available are. Um, so Matt, I'd like to say, let me meet with the new friar and discuss with him. Let me also reach out to Renz and see what they would be willing to allow us to use in that area, um, because the booths are definitely tricky. Yeah. Um, but the performance aspect is wide open and very exciting and inviting. Um, what about, we had folks, I, I can't remember which ones now, but we had a couple of folks who wanted to do 
like juggling in the street kind of things. You know what I mean? Um, oh, that we can definitely do. Um, <laughs> that that if if they reach out, we will we will work with um, our Matica Circus and our um, our other circus performers um, because we're going to be doing a lot of moving circus performance. We'll do the big central circus again with the aerial. Um, mm -hmm. But we looking yeah. at moving and also um, face painters, jugglers, all of that. So that's mm -hmm. going to be something that we can definitely work with them on. Okay. Um, so, um, ahead, I'm sorry. Is there going to be some sort of MC at each of the stages and um, NASL? I will so, not. Yeah. Um, MC is easy. Um, because that can be me or someone from your team um, who introduces each. That's super, super easy. Um, yeah. Robin, I just, ASL is something that I'm really learning about and coming into, um, you know, sort of relationship with. Um, so I would actually rely on you guys to assist me with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually, Robin, you brought that up um, previously, and we we did in fact um, vote to hold a little bit of money aside to um, get a get an ASL interpreter with uh, one of several different organizations that we worked with. So that we we definitely already made that um, commitment as a cultural council, not necessarily with the bid, but right. So we we so, will we will absolutely commit to doing that. Yeah, and and you know we have info and. Of who does that in the area and all of that so yeah, yeah. robin as as an aside would you mind sharing info with me just via email so i can have that yeah. um for future yeah. thank you so much um okay so this no this is good so you'll you'll talk to um okay. to uh, and which i'm sorry renz is the Renz is the gas station and they just yes. we've always yeah we've always sort of focused that as a, as an athletic space so basketball mm -hmm. and blah 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 and we're still going to do that but they have so much space up um there because they clear out all the cars for it um so it's it's an option um th there's several places I just think I I hadn't thought about that so I I need to bring that yeah, back totally. okay yeah and and we'll, we'll look out for that and We'll start. I'll draft a little message to our grantees, and then I'll wait for those for those details before I send it out. And should be it should be just fine. We're still we're still several months away, so we're in good shape. Right, and um, and I'd like to do. I think we could do a really nice joint press release on this because I think it's a really nice collaborative. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there to everybody. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be great. Right. Um, I mean, this is a public meeting, so and I guess, but. But you know, um, and they do sometimes <laughs> go back and watch the recordings and stuff. But yeah, I think a, yeah. a release that was in a, in a story that we kind of um, push mm -hmm. out is great. Yeah, cool. Any anybody questions for have... me from anybody? Yeah, oh, exactly. sorry. <laughs> oh no, you're good. So I actually do. So who's are you doing all of the organizing and production, or do you have? some people to help you um we, we've got a, we've got a great team um the block party is you know we sort of have a how-to block party if you will yeah. um you know the, the majority of the work honestly is on the businesses to get all of their food product and everything outside mm -hmm. um this is a new addition to it but i think that um liz and i are up to the challenge and i would love to work with i think it was cody and leah who um, which I know this is very different because now we're talking September. So I don't know what your academic schedules are like, or um, I don't even know what your um, everybody is. But if there's opportunity to work together, I would love to bring that group back together and work together on the programming. And um, again, I think having a pass out this year is going to be really exciting because there's so much programming going on, which has not always been the case with the block party. Um, the block party, as I understand it, before I came along, had a DJ in, in a, in a future liner at the top, and that was kind of it. So this is a next step. Um, we, we stepped it up last year with the main stage and Mr. G and Shaka Zoba, but was it Shaka Zoba? Wait. Sorry, I might be mixing up my bands. I've got a lot of bands in my head. Um, so this is a whole next step, bringing another another main stage. So if Leah, Cody, anybody wants to work with was, us on this, it was we'll Eleanor last year, actually. Oh, it was Eleanor. Okay, okay. Um, so if anybody Leah wants to, Leah will be 
Leo will, may or may not be able to. I was just about to say, so I'm right now a senior in high school. So okay. I'm going to be in New York next year. So I could try and help virtually, but I probably won't be of a lot of help. No, um, Eleanor, what's your schedule looking like next year? My schedule is, you know, I'll, I'll be here in the fall. I am going to go, I think I'll be abroad in the spring, but that won't really affect okay. this. Um, but yeah, I would, I would love to help in the fall. I think I'll be busy, but definitely wanting to help out and prioritize this. Great. Excellent. And I think it's pretty, it's going to be reaching out to people. It's going to be finding out who wants to be part of it. And then it's going to be literally putting people into the right slots and working with the production team um, to make sure that we're putting things in order that makes sense for production so that they're not running up and putting a whole band set up together and then taking it all down for a dance performance and then running back up. So we just want to be careful about that. But I have lots of experience in that and I can work with you guys on that. Yeah, it's going to be that fun. great. Um, I have a quick question for Gabrielle. This is Rachel. Yeah. Um, hi. So is there kind of like a time frame in terms of planning um, schedules that, you know, for example, mm -hmm. deadlines for each um, um, process that um, we can refer to? Or is it just a matter of emailing you or Julianne or Matt to find out, um, you know, like when mm -hmm. the deadline is for a specific you know, whether it's advertising, you, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. Yeah. So um, we, we sort of, when we start to plan the block party, we work backwards and we start to plan really in the beginning of July is when we get very serious about reaching out to the restaurants. Um, I've already pulled all the permits and stuff like that. I just get that done literally the year before. I'm like, Hey, set me up. Um, but I can put a backwards timeline together for everybody and send that out or Matt, I'll send it to you. And, uh, uh, Julianne, and we'll go from there. How does that sound? Yeah, well, that'll be some of the info that we need to get into our messaging when we when we send it out to our um, grantees as well. So yeah, yeah, grantees. I think we want people to like think about this and commit earlier because that gives us more ability to really talk to our production team and find out what's possible. Agreed. Thank you. I'm not not to create extra work for you, Gabrielle. I just thought if there was something you already have going, you know, that you, you would be for to, to to share with us the, the oh, yeah, relevant absolutely. portions. Yeah. That would be great. No, definitely. Thank you. Yeah. Um just to let you know, I'm definitely around in the fall. So I can still be part of that process. Thank you, Cody. That's awesome. I think we've got a good team. Yeah, we really do. And we will be, um, we will hopefully have a couple of new members as well. We're going to be doing, um, we're going to be doing that work over the summer as well. So um, got a great nucleus and, and look forward to being all right, Gabrielle, um, I don't think folks doesn't, well, I don't wanna jump the gun. Does anybody have additional questions for Gabrielle? Well, it's completely off topic, but I love you, what about you, and I just made it. So Wait, you love what? Your watermelon gazpacho, and I just made it tonight. <laughs> Did you well, find I that put, online? <laughs> yep, I put it for recipes, and I guess because they're in, we have whatever the algorithm went right to your recipe, so. It is. That yeah. is. Um, that was one of our last restaurant's most popular dishes, um, and people would literally in the winter be like, "Are you going to do watermelon gazpacho?" And I was like, "Do you see any watermelons growing?" <laughs> um, so that is a very amazing throwback, and it's really making me smile because I'm in the middle Good. of helping a restaurant get open, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, I hate this business." <laughs> mm, yeah. Well, it's awesome. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I love it too. Mm. It's really <laughs> sweet of you. All right, you guys have a great night. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, Thanks Gabrielle. So Good night. Hi, everyone. Good night. <laughs> that was an amazing reference. I'm, I'm very impressed. Uh huh. Um, well, I figured she'd make her at least smile. <laughs> Lime and ginger is the main thing. So, Rachel and I both have kind of quick updates, um, but I think we should tackle the AHRA amendment request together first. Um, 
because I think that's that may be the more substantial conversation unless unless somebody sees you know a clear sort of a clear response to this. Um, so I would just tell you real quick, as it says in the amendment request, um, they put in for uh, five thousand dollars to create a documentary. Um, they were upfront with us from the start about well not from the very start, but but I think during our during our process of awarding grants that year, um, I got a call from from uh, Michelle Miller who said, you know, look, the, the reality is we're not ready to to launch a, a full documentary anyway. And I said, well, that's good timing, Michelle, because we just <laughs> we just deliberated on this last night and we decided, you know, we're leaning towards giving you, uh, I think, the five hundred dollars seed. We kind of we we refer to sometimes we refer to these things as seed money, like. You know, we support your project, but we don't think it's fully, you know, it's fully realized yet. So here's some seed money to get the planning started. Um, and so that was, you know, a year and a half ago, approximately a little bit. Yeah, right around a year and a half. Um, and then there hasn't been any action since from them. Uh, you know, understand sometimes that happens, the seed money. It's hard to figure out exactly how to use it if you're not. Um, and so with, as I mentioned earlier, um, Pamela Nolan Young took over the DEI office and she became the um, town liaison to the AHRA, which is the uh, African American Heritage Reparations Assembly. Um, and this, the original grant was to do a documentary, um, you know, documenting their their efforts towards reparations in Amherst. Um, and and so there was really no action on that for um, for about a year and a half, year year and a half. Although there was some some correspondence back and forth. And then with um, with Pamela joining the department uh, about six months, nine months ago, um, eventually we wound up getting what you have in your inboxes now, which is the amendment request form. Um, and essentially the amendment, they, they make two sort of pitches. Um, one being to transcribe AHRA meetings and listening sessions. Um, and the other being so transcribing their meetings, um, which you know is has a clear connection to the documentary purpose that they originally came with, um, and then the other one is, it's kind of unclear to me what the actual use of funds would be here. Um, it says to engage in an informational and brainstorming session with Michael and Carrie. So maybe there are consultants who who charge an hourly rate for something like that. But you know this this is really all the information that I have on the matter too is this is this attachment. So if folks have questions, insights, comments, um, I'm just kind of open the floor for a discussion. So the, the original proposal was to basically document this new whatever it is committee department. I'm not quite sure what it is. Um, no, it was to document the the reparations. And how they came, they decide how to do that, right? Because they're the committee making the decision. And we had said, we don't think they're, you know, are they going to be able to do this at this point? And apparently that's, they concluded the same thing. So isn't this for the same, is, is this just for the $500 we gave them? Yes. No. Oh. Pretty low. Well. Okay. Because they want to do, I'm not clear either. So they want to do something else with it, or just that it was extended. We gave them five hundred dollars. Right. Um, to, to their request. Go ahead and read oh. it. Yeah. Do other folks have questions or comments? We'll, we'll... Okay. Yeah. So I mean, these these are sort of the two ideas they have for using the five hundred. Is basically, what, you know, I mean, it's and it goes back. Yeah, it's, it's still the original grant, um, but because it's a year and a half, because it's you know it's now six months past the um, end date. We Julianne and I wanted to bring it to the council just to to look at this. You know, I, looking at it now, I'll be honest with you, looking at it now and sort of processing it. Um, since the original grant was to um, uh, document the process. To me, the you know tra the transcriptions is a very clean sort of straightforward documentary activity um, to to document this process, and it feels like th that money would have an immediate you know product in the documentation. Um, 
on the other hand, you, you know, I could see an area where, you know, bringing in some high quality consultants leads, you know, to less immediate, but maybe long-term more impactful outcome for the grant. Um, you know, in all honesty, I, I think I would probably support either one of these if, if they can if they came with either one. I don't think we've ever had the situation before where somebody gave us two, you know, two possible choices. Um, I'm say the only trick you pull about is long to see well, will they ask for more grants, you know, and is that a fair process to say fund, to fund the things that project for, let's say, two years? Um, but I say, you know, the best call to work is long term, but I feel since there's six months past, and so I wouldn't say immediate. Project, I would prefer, but I'm not against a long term project. Yeah, I appreciate that point. I mean, we certainly we see people, you know, come in for multiple grants on the same large project over, you know, that's that's not um, unheard of, I don't think. But, you know, I mean, it, I think you're, for me anyway, Cody, if I'm understanding you correctly, you know, certainly a year and a half of no activity doesn't inspire a lot of confidence in, you know, these, these funds being used um, promptly. So, but that being said, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a very important, it's a nationally significant project that Amherst is doing. It's an incredibly complex project. Um, so, you know, I, I do have, I'm sympathetic to that as well. I mean, I, I'm I'm inclined to just sort of tell them that they can do either one of these things, but they must spend these funds by the end of the calendar year. That's my my inclination, mm -hmm. uh, and just get it off the books. And and the other thing is, if if they haven't spent these funds, and then they put in for a new grant, they won't be you know, it would be hard to support a new grant while these funds sit unspent. If they if they spend them, document it, and then put it in for a new grant, then that's that's you know, I think a very different thing. Um, I don't get the sense though that they're going to be putting in for a new grant from mm -hmm. us this this fall. I could be wrong, but you know nothing I see, you know, gives evidence to that. But but I, I would say if they don't if they don't have these money and and we can communicate that to them that if these monies aren't spent, you know, it's gonna it's gonna reflect poorly on a grant application for additional funds if they come back in in the fall in this fall. Leah? And do you think they're asking us? Um, with suggesting two different um, ideas for how to use this money, do you think they're wanting us to come back with what we want, or do you think they want us to be like, we approve both of these? <laughs> That's, I mean, <laughs> you know what? I really, that, I, that was my question when I saw this. I was like, well, what's, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think we, it's, it's up to us. You know, I think I, have, I, I can't, I can't tell you what their intent was in giving us two options. But I, I personally am, am, I don't know, comfortable. But I, you know, I, I would vote for approval of either one of these. You know, and, and I'm happy to tell them that either one of these is approved. You know, tell us which one you're doing, and then you know, get it done by the end of the calendar year. That's my kind of my my inclination with this at this point. I, it's um, it's only five hundred dollars. Right. I mean, if it was five thousand, I think it would be much broader discussion probably and i don't know they said oh we have this money how can we use it hmm let's come up with some ideas um and i came up with two <laughs> my uh my question is more you know 
will the public see some sort of product by the end of the calendar year? And otherwise, I mean, it is, it, it's, a, it's, it's important. And it isn't just for Amherst, it's, you know, as you said, being launched and, you know, possibly emulated or not, but it, I think it, it's important. And yeah, it's been a year and a half, but you know, there's been changes in personnel and it's government and, and it's not a whole lot of money. So for me, either of these are fine. I would just like to see something because it is important. Rachel, please. Yes, hi. Um, so I guess from our perspective, the way I see it is that um, we kind of approve, we approve the funding or the grant based on the merits we saw in the project and, you know, kind of we allocate it accordingly. And and I guess my my own response is just that it you know is it do, do we really need to approve yes or no on either so i'm kind of i'm kind of really agreeing with what you all have been saying but i guess the the larger principle is um as long as whatever they're doing with this money is um contributing to the goal or the the product that they uh propose to to produce right so i think uh, i wonder if like framing it in a in a kind of a broader broader terms um and then just saying that, yes, we do expect accountability by a certain date. Because um, I don't necessarily think it's up to us to tell them which which avenue or how to spend that money specifically, as long as it's going to serve towards the, the purpose of their ultimate product and goal um, expediently. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. In fact, I should have been more. The amendment request is the is the time extension, you, you know, and, and you're absolutely right. Um, the you know the time extension, uh, both both of these fall under the under the purview of of the do documenting the operations efforts. So so mm -hmm. absolutely right. They're both they're both expenditures within within the already approved grant. So it's really just a matter of are we willing to continue to to extend this timeline further? So thank you, Rachel. That that does help clarify it for me. Um, I think we should just make a motion and, and vote on it. You know, let's just and let's just tell them yes. You know, yes, please spend this money. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That sounds good. Do you want to make that motion, Rachel, since you just made that excellent point? Uh, sure, I'll make the motion to approve the extension to spend the money by the end of 2023. Is that what we're voting on? And I'll second it. Okay. Um, Eleanor? Yep, that sounds good. <laughs> Robin? <laughs> yeah. Robin? Yes. Cody. I'm not sure. I had lost you for a few seconds, so maybe he did. Yes. Gotcha. And Leah. Yes. Okay. So it is unanimous. That's great. And I will I will let them know. Um uh I'll let them know the extension is until December 31st. But I'll also let them know that, you know, we do have another round of grants coming up and, you know, this is a direct direct grant fund and that's explicitly we, you know, we cannot award any additional funds for direct grants that haven't been executed yet. So, but, sorry, I, I phrased that poorly. We can't award any additional funds Actually, I liked it. <laughs> to grantees who haven't executed their, their, you know, previous year's direct grants. All right, great. Well, that, that that's the business that was on the agenda. Um, we did have two things that came up since we posted within 48 hours. Um, Rachel, do you want to go first and just give an update on the community um, outreach survey that you've been exploring? Sure. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Great. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think I just raised that one of the meetings because I thought it was interesting that different communities are doing community surveys or different cultural councils have, have done community surveys to to better inform their own work. So after um, I raised that idea, I did go and look at a whole bunch of them because they were shared by MCC and um, they they kind of they're all very different in the sense of like length and and but the questions that they ask you you can imagine are are 
pretty common, but the extreme examples I can um, name is that Felmas, um, their questionnaire was 10 pages long. The survey was 10 pages long. Whereas in Orange, I think they had a single question. So that gives you an idea of the range of um, the types of uh, surveys people were doing. So I, um, I, I guess I raise it just to see if everyone feels or if, if most, of, most of us feel that um, something like this would be useful for one, um, publicizing that we do have these grants and two, um, help us maybe fine tune or refine our own criteria for assessment or for our priorities, you know, going forward. So I'm, um, and if we think we want to do something like that, um, I guess we could discuss at some point how to do that because I, um, I I've just personally, I feel like the, the one question approach might be really um, effective in, in maybe put out over several um, bursts, whether it's via social media or whatever. But that's, that's just kind of what occurred to me um, in thinking about it on my own. So that's, that's the, 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 I guess, the idea or, or that um, I have. So let me know if you have any questions. Well, yeah. Um, I was going to say, I think it might be interesting to get information on um, uh, who's like engaging with these product projects. I think that would be interesting. Like if we could break down like um, even like age demographics, like are people, how are people finding out about these projects and are people going to them? And hopefully like targeting that could help us with marketing and outreach in the future. And then also having some kind of statistic with like, um, could also help in marketing, being able to say like on, we did a community survey, 80% of people said they wanted more theater projects and here are like the theater projects were funded. So like having some kind of um, feeling like the community has a stake in decisions that are getting made and is helping with that, I think could be helpful for people being like, oh yeah, I did do this short thing and voted on this. This is like, I want to go see this. This is, and I think having that community input might be nice. Leah, are you saying that um, if we were to do the survey, we want to collect um, demographic information on the on the respondents, people who? Is that what I, you're saying? I think so. I don't know how in depth we should go, but I think it could be helpful. Like if we're doing a lot of work trying to improve diversity, um, I think it's important to track that but I also I don't really know much about surveys and collecting information so I'd I don't know if that's I don't know if it would be a reliable sample pool of like who's I don't know but um, I would certainly collect the age range and maybe what type of culture, cultural events interest them? Right? Maybe not as well as this you are, but do you like African-American events? Do you like Asian-American events? That way we know, all right, this is the culture they want to see more events about. Thank you, Cody. And I, don't know, I was just want to. Oh, sorry, Rachel. Go ahead. Rachel, can you hear me or no? Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Okay, great. No, no, no. I was just, gonna, um, I was just gonna add that I think, I guess, the first question is really, do we think it's worthwhile conducting a survey? Then, if so, then we work out the mechanics how to do that in the time frame in which we would like to accomplish it. So, I guess it's just you know, kind of a two, two that process. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I would, I know you looked at several, but I would appreciate, I mean, if you would be willing to sort of present on, you know, it doesn't have to be anything formal, but just talk us through, you know, the different instruments that you saw and and your your opinions on them. I think when you brought this matter up last month or two months ago, I think we were all unanimous in wanting to do a better job of gathering community input. So I think there's at least tentative um support for the idea i mean i don't mean to speak for everybody but but you know when you brought it up before we all were we all were enthusiastic thanks cody take care bye uh, cody so you know i think i think the answer is probably going to be tentatively I, I think we all agree that we we need to do a better job of getting public input um and so if you were willing to talk us through a little bit more of what other communities were doing that, that you had seen, um, sometimes it's helpful to even, re, you know, cold call, contact them and, and find out. And I don't want to put this all on you. I mean, we can we can help you with that. But I think it it would be worthwhile to find out how can we get um, a broader and more diverse, you know, set of voices, uh, both as grantees and, and as participants of our of our grants. Leah, please. I was going to say, I think it might be interesting to ask the question, like, do you, because we know that there is a lot of programming in these different things. I think it would be interesting to ask, like, do you feel like there is abundant arts programming in Amherst? And I, I would be interested to see what the population of Amherst thinks about that. And then also, like, how, like, how are you finding out, out about events? Like, is Instagram as effective as we think it is? I think this could be, I think it would definitely be really beneficial to have a survey. And also, I think especially in focusing on public outreach and how the community interacts with events and finds out about them, I think that would be really beneficial. Thank you. Um, okay, so do you want me to talk through now, Matt, or are you talking about another time? Um, I mean, if you're- I mean, We're, we're, we're almost just... seven o'clock, right? Almost. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, sorry, what were you gonna say, Matt, if you wanted me to just do what? Well, if you're prepared now, but I, I think, I mean, it might be helpful if you could, um, I mean, we put it on the agenda and, and sort of, uh, I don't know if you if you took any notes or anything, but just sort of kind of a, a snapshot of what our particularly other communities are doing. Um, or, I mean, I'll be honest with you, you know, I think there's a fairly low risk venture that you're talking about here. So if you just want to sort of propose um, a survey, you know, a few survey items, I think we would be open to, to having that conversation. And again, I don't want to put it on you, but, you know, some of us could... Just propose something um, for action. You know, I, I don't think there's any. I don't think. I, I think it's always, it's always worth trying something when it comes to community outreach, and then learning from how that goes. You know, it's, I, like I said, it's it's fairly. Um, I think people people appreciate an effort. You know what I mean. Um, so, yeah, I, right. Okay. Okay. I was um, just very quickly. Uh, I can. I can certainly. I think my my question to to our group is just whether like the mechanics of it, like how we would do it in the sense of because my my own inclination is to try to do something that's very short and maybe spread out over a few weeks. Um, and I don't know how um, because I, I feel like. The, the orange um, cultural council that just sent out one question, because I think a lot more people are more likely to answer one question as opposed to 10 pages or even 10 questions, right? Because if I'm on my phone, if I'm scrolling through something, I see this, it's one question I answer, I'm done. And I don't know if I'm like setting myself up for like a huge amount of, I don't know, follow up work, whatever, but it's just conceptually, I don't know if you, how you all feel about um, having a series of questions that would be that we can um, through which we can accumulate 
accumulate data. Um, it doesn't have to be a single question each time, but you know, maybe we can, there's certain avenues like whether it's the town website or social media um, that where people can answer questions and we can you know collect the feedback. I don't I don't know how involved that whole process would become and that's why I'm really wanting to to find out especially from those of you who use social media a lot more than I do. Um whether that's that's kind of even a, a sensible approach to take. I Personally, I, th I think that, you know, um, short is good, but I, I think it's a little, I don't think we need to decide, right? You know, I, I think, I don't think that the first, to me, the first question is not how many questions are going to be in the survey. You know, the first question is what do we want to know? And and then, you know, we kind of design the survey from there. So I, I would, and, and personally, what I want to know is what kinds of arts and culture events do folks want in Amherst that they don't currently have? Um, and then I would also want to know, you know, if, if folks felt comfortable applying for our grants, knew about our grants and, and felt, mm. uh, you know, I'm, I'm curious in both those questions, um, broadly, you know, what, what do people want and, um, you know, are, are the people who we, are the people that are the people that the people want able to access our grant application, you know, that, I mean, those are the, for me, those are the two big questions. And I'm sure if we, if we talked, we could probably find a few more, um, Right. And I think with these kinds of surveys, the more specific the questions, the more useful, it, the easier it is for people to answer and also the, use, the more useful data we would get. So, and I think that, um, yeah, so no, I'm glad you, you answered the question that way because that was, yeah, obviously I don't, um, I think wanting to, knowing what we want will help decide or, you know, really we find what exactly the question is, even if it's just a single one. So, yeah. Okay. So, Matt, I, I know we have um, the meeting recorded, but what you just said is, I think, a good kind of leading question. I mean, we'll phrase it differently, but yeah, I think that's you know, this this is the goal. Um, yeah, I'm 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 kind of happy. I'm I can go back and look at some of these questionnaires and see how that was done. And um, I don't know if anybody, who else wants to, to work on this together? I mean, I'd be happy to, you know, certainly correspond over email and, and, you know, try to try to have something that we could bring, you know, bring to the council next month for, for discussion, you know, I don't I know if others are. Six months, six weeks left or so. Mm -hmm. I think I can work on it. Otherwise, I've been with senior spring. I have a lot of things I'm wrapping up, but this would definitely be something I'd be like really interested to work in starting like June ish, but I don't know if that's too late. I, I don't think that would be too late. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, I'm feeling at the moment, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed by work and sickness, but mm -hmm. like Matt, I think I'd be happy to. Um, help out over email or anything, you know, tie up loose ends wherever you need it. Thank you. I think, yeah, maybe what um, I'll, maybe Matt, I can correspond with you first and we can just like at least, you know, redefine more clearly what the questions are and how to ask them, I guess. And Robin, I'm sorry, I didn't catch what you just said. You said you have six weeks left in your term. Is that what you meant or? Yeah, and then yeah. I, okay. I'm so. Oh, we can still ask you questions in the meantime, right? What do you think about what to ask? <laughs> I think 10 <laughs> pages is way too long. Um, oh, yeah. One question, you know, maybe what, uh, just, yeah, I mean, I just got asked for feedback from a doctor's appointment I went to, and they kept saying, it's really short. Well, they took more time telling me that it was short than the questions asked and it was very it was annoying <laughs> so that's good to know think about so, what you want to end you know would you like really answer this even if you have things you want to say so you know how to do that and shorter is better you know maybe more than one question maybe not i don't know 
We can also have, even with, I think there's a difference between like 10 open-ended questions and then 10 like multiple choice. And I like the kinds of surveys where it's like, sometimes there's like a statement and then it's like strongly agree, agree, neutral, disagree, strongly disagree. We could have a few of those that we like target and workshop and those take like a second to answer. And then maybe like one or two like optional long form answers at the end of that. You can also put sec sorry. Just put in a section saying, is there anything else you want to say or yeah. you're interested in if you know the other questions didn't um so didn't I apologize. I do have to um move us along just in the interest of time. I, I want to give a very yeah. update um which is that I spoke to um Amherst Media uh, this week, yesterday, and um, they they have all this wonderful footage that um, Leah and Cole provided them last year, and they've been able to make three short videos showcasing three of our grantees, which have been posted cool. on Facebook, and we've tried to distribute those um, through our Facebook channel and through the town's channels and stuff. Um, they do have a, a bunch of additional footage. They weren't able to get me a number but it sounded like they had at least five or six additional short videos that they're intending to produce um, through the end of this year. And I actually called him right before this meeting to see if he had been able to get a hold of the number, like like how many were actually in the slate. But that that person is not in; she hasn't been in this week. So, um, but just know, Leah, that I'm on top of it, and we want to see those, make sure those see the light of day, because that was a true labor of love for you all, with an emphasis on the labor um, and and our grantees too. So. So the showcase videos, I will be sort of staying on top of that and making sure that those come out. Um, you know, I mean, obviously it's a Amherst Media doesn't have a huge staff or or a huge budget, so you know we'll we'll, we'll play nicely with them. But I want to make sure that those come out because, you know, you and our grantees put a lot of work into them. So you said three are online. Yeah. Already? Yep. On YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Under Amherst Media. On the Amherst Media YouTube channel, and then we've shared at least two of them on the face on our face on the ACC Facebook page, and I think maybe all three. I, I can only think of two off the top of my head, but, um, but yeah, but they're really nice. I mean, it's it's wonderful footage and and obviously wonderful content. The other piece that I know, uh, Robin, you'll be happy to hear this. Um, so the Disability Access Roundtable, um, that is that is still a project that we would like to fund with them using local funds. Um, and there was, I think, a communication breakdown towards the end of this past calendar year and into this spring where we didn't give them all the information and context that they needed, I think, to be able to move the work forward. Um, and now one of their key producers is on maternity leave. Um, so really they can't take any action on that until the, the fall. Um, but we told them, you know, that, that would be, that's a priority, that remains a priority for us. And, you know, we'll work with that. They're being very, very generous with their time in terms of scope of work um, and the $2,500 that we're giving them. Um, so I just wanna want to let everybody know that that's, that is also still in the sort of shoot for production. And um, those funds, you know, we will ensure that that happens with, with them. Um, that is a, that's a $250 grant that we gave them kind of a seed money grant, like, you know, why don't you come back to us with a proposal for an actual yeah. project? And then when they came back to us with the proposal, we allocated 2250 local funds um, to make up to that 2,500. So, so you know, the um, the funding is still set aside for the project and, and the grant, um, but we, we're gonna work with them and, and just make sure that we get it done in the fall when the time comes. And who knows, we may even call some ex officio uh, ACC members to come back and, and, you know, be a voice in that, in that project as well. In fact, I anticipate we definitely will. Right. Well, it's a process. It, yeah. And it's, you know, it's municipal, it's, it's municipal agencies and, and the natural right. limits that are upon them. So with that, I do want to end, I was trying, I was shooting for seven and I, we ran a little bit over, but um, I want to end because I know we have at least two <laughs> folks who are feeling a little under the weather, one who's traveling, and then I hear the screams from upstairs. So I'm, I think, <laughs> I, think I need to go address that as well. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and adjourn and um, thank you all very, very much. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you all. Good night.
night. Yeah.